This Pikmin 4 enemy tier list will go over all the enemies in the game and cover how difficult they are, with S tier being dangerous and D tier being little to no threat at all. Let's start this off with an iconic enemy, the Dwarf Bulborg. Now this little guy is super weak. With the auto lock feature in Pikmin 4, this thing will probably never kill a Pikmin. This is easily a D tier, they're just so weak and they only have 100 HP. Next up we have the Albino Dwarf Bulborb or the Missing Link. Now these guys here have a little bit more health, but they're still very weak. 200 HP is a difference, they're still easily taken out, and in nighttime mode, Glow Pikmin deal with these very, very efficiently. For that reason, I'll place them in D tier. The Bulborb. It's got some health to it, but they're constantly sleeping, you can easily go up behind them. Because new players might actually have some difficulty facing these, I'll place them a tier higher than the other ones, and I'll put them into C tier. The Jumbo Bulborb. Now this guy has some HP to him. It's sitting at 2,500 and it does take some time to defeat. Additionally, when it shakes off Pikmin, it does so in a way where they fall directly in front of it. Then, the Jumbo Bulborb scoops up a huge amount of Pikmin. You can still kill it during this time, but it can definitely catch players off guard. It's also very annoying in night expeditions to deal with because of this large health pool. I honestly think placing it in B tier is pretty fair. Next up are the Orange Bulborbs. The Dwarf Orange Bulborb is the same as the Albino, with the exact same amount of HP, so it'll also get a D tier. The Orange Bulborb, these are a little bit more annoying. This is mainly because they wake up from further away than the standard Bulborb, and they will follow you a fair amount further. In some Danduri, particularly the Danduri version where you use Rock Pikmin, it can be extremely annoying because of its spawn point. Then it's pretty common that it will follow your Pikmin back to your Onion and then just camp there eating all your Pikmin. So if you're not paying attention, it can really mess up your Danduri. It also has more HP, so for those reasons, I'll also place this enemy into B tier. The Dwarf Bull Bear. These annoying things follow the parent and they make fighting the parent a lot harder than it needs to be. They also have more HP than the previous Dwarf Bull Borbs, so for that reason, I'll place them into C tier. And, the parent is up next, the Spotty Bull Bear. Everyone hated this thing from Pikmin 2. It's pretty annoying because it still constantly walks around in the giant's hearth, and it can catch you off guard if you're not paying attention. It's nowhere near as overpowered as it used to be since it lacks health regen, and it won't come back from the dead. Still though, the fact that it has the babies that follow it, makes it fall comfortably into the B tier. The Dwarf Frosty Bull Board. This thing has very low HP, but since you can pretty much only use a few options to deal with it, Ice Pikmin, Purples, Fire Pine Cones, or Ochi, so I think placing it in C tier is pretty fair. On the other hand, the Frosty Bulborb is very annoying. You have to fight this thing with Ice Pikmin or Ochi. Of course, you can also use the Fire Pine Cone. You can throw other types of Pikmin on it and whistle them away once they freeze. It's very annoying to deal with in Danduri battles when you barely have any Pikmin, it will also refreeze its back pretty quickly if you do use a fire pine cone. I'm pretty sure there have been numerous players that have lost Pikmin to this enemy, so I actually think placing it in A tier is pretty fair. From cold to hot, we have the fiery Bulblax. This flaming Bulblax is honestly not that bad. Red Pikmin and Ochi completely bully it. The fact that it has fire and it's often hidden in some area surrounded by water, plus it's decently high HP, makes it a little bit annoying. Definitely not as bad as the Frosty Bulborb, I'll put it into the B tier. The Whip Tongue Bulborb. Okay, so this enemy shows up like once in the entire game. Well, two of them show up at the Serene Shores, and then there is another mission in Danduri, where it also shows up again. I never really had a problem with these, but they can be annoying since they eat Pikmin really quickly, and for that reason alone, I'll place it into B tier. The Bulborb Larva. This thing is the 13th one in the Piklopedia, and for good reason. I hated this thing in Pikmin 2 because of how annoying and frustrating it was, and I still hate it. It's not as bad as it was in the second game, but honestly just screw this thing. There's never just one of them, and there's always so many of them. They can easily ruin your day. Honestly just remove this thing from the Pikmin game, and I'll be a lot happier. I'll place it into A tier simply because there's so many of them. Of course there are the odd situations like in the tutorial, where they're completely a D tier since they don't do anything. But for the most part in actual experiences, they are quite annoying, especially when they're combined with the next enemy on this list. The Empress Bulblax. Without babies, the Empress Bulblax is honestly a B tier. But with babies, it jumps up to an A tier, 
And then when you combine it into a small space where you have to go side to side on these geysers and avoid falling babies and falling rocks, this is probably one of the most difficult fights in the game. Easy S tier. The Emperor Bulblax. Why are there two? Why are there two in the Piclopedia too? Why are you surrounded by them in this cave? Why? Honestly though, they're not too bad. They're quite strong and they have a fair amount of HP. The roar can also catch some players off guard and end up making them lose some Pikmin. For this reason, I'll place them into A tier. The Sovereign Bulblax. This is one of the few bosses I actually found myself using items to defeat, particularly Bomb Rocks. Fighting the Sovereign Bulblax without Bomb Rocks is fully possible, but it is on the difficult side. Combined with its very high HP of 8000 and the disorienting roar, and the fact that it jumps and causes rocks to fall from the sky, for those reasons, I will place it in the S tier. Finally, moving out of the Grub Dog family and into the Blowhog family, we have the Fiery Blowhog up first. This enemy doesn't really have a high killing potential. Of course, it can catch your Pikmin on fire, but whistling them is fairly simple. For those reasons, C tier. The Watery Blowhog. So this enemy is in the same boat as the Fiery Blowhog. I don't think I've honestly ever seen this thing attack just because of how quickly you can take them down. I know that the pressurized water can't be resisted like fire, so it's obviously a little bit more dangerous, and for that reason I'll just put them slightly above them in the C tier. The Snowy Blowhawk. I honestly don't know if Pikmin die after a period of time after getting frozen. The reason for this is because once a Pikmin gets frozen, they're frozen in one spot, so whistling them back is incredibly easy. Therefore, I have to place this in D tier since its killing potential is just so low. The Titan Blowhawk. Now this big boy takes some time to defeat, but it's not really much stronger in any way. I don't even really know if it adds much new mechanics. For those reasons, I'm just going to put it slightly ahead in the C tier. The Blizzarding Blowhog. It's just a snowy big boy. Still very weak, it's unlikely to kill anything. Just because it has more HP, I'll put it slightly ahead the standard snowy blowhog in the D tier. The Tusked Blowhog. Now we're talking. Pumba here is probably the most dangerous member of the Blowhog family. He has a quick charge that can easily get Pikmin, and is often placed in some areas where it can knock some of your Pikmin off ledges in specific caves. For these reasons alone, I'm pretty sure people have lost Pikmin to him, and it's gotta go in B tier, well above all the other Blowhog members in the family. Moving on to the Armored Cannon Larva. This one is pretty annoying. It shoots rocks, they curve, Oftentimes when you go up to them, they'll hide back underground, and you kind of just have to run around waiting for them to pop up again. It's very easy to get Pikmin crushed by rocks if you're not riding on Ochi, so for those reasons, I'll place them in the B tier. The Horned Cannon Beetle, on the other hand, has a lot more HP, but choreographs its attacks a lot more. It's an easy boss fight overall. I'll put it in B tier out of respect for how much HP it has, and the potential that some people can make mistakes when fighting it. The Arctic Cannon Larva. I honestly don't think this thing can kill Pikmin. The snowball is just annoying as it picks up your Pikmin and then it breaks and it ends up making you lose some time. For that reason alone, it has to go into D tier. Next up, we have the Arctic Cannon Beetle. This thing honestly falls in the same boat. It's awesome looking, but it really doesn't do that much. Especially the second time you fight it since all you're doing is avoiding the snowball. If you do happen to get hit by the snowball, there isn't really much of a punishment. When you're fighting it the first time, some icicles do fall from the ceiling, but again, its danger level is super low, and I think most people will be able to dispatch of it easily. For those reasons, it's going in the C tier. The Female Shear Grub. These things don't even attack, and they literally can't even kill a Pikmin. For those reasons, it has to go into D tier. The Male Shear Grub. Now this one can actually kill some Pikmin, and if it pops out of the ground and catches you off guard, you can end up losing a Pikmin to it. However, with the auto lock feature and the fact that they move quite slowly, I honestly think these things have to go in D tier as well. The Mama Shear Grub, on the other hand, this thing is actually kind of dangerous. Rock Pikmin win with no problemo, but other Pikmin can get crushed pretty easily. If you're riding Ochi and this thing happens to bump into you, expect to lose Pikmin. I think B tier is pretty fair. The Shear Wig. This thing takes a while to eat Pikmin, and again, with the auto lock feature, you can easily take them down with pretty much any Pikmin type. Because of how long it takes to actually take down a Pikmin and how low HP they have, D tier. The Shear Flea. 
This one is actually fairly annoying. It deliberately attempts to knock you off Ochi when you're riding with your captain, and there's normally a bunch of them in a cluster. Because of this, dealing with them can actually cause some problems, and you might end up losing a Pikmin to them. C tier. The Joust Mite. This might get some inexperienced players off guard. Overall, it's not too bad, and their health pool is pretty low, allowing Pikmin types like Purples or Rocks to pretty much instant kill it. Additionally, Pikmin like Rock Pikmin can't get impaled by it. However, if you're not careful, I can see some players losing some Pikmin to this. I'll place it in C tier. The Flying Joust Knight. It's not horrible, it's just a little bit more difficult to deal with, since it'll go up in the sky and then you have to throw Pikmin at it. You can often end up impaling some of your Pikmin if you're not careful with your placement while you're throwing it. You do have a window of time in order to defeat this enemy once it does impale Pikmin, so it's not super dangerous, but I do have to put some respect on its name and place it in the B tier. The Swooping Snitch Bug. This enemy here literally can't kill Pikmin. Unlike in Pikmin 2, these enemies are never really clustered with other enemies, so it's not really going to throw your Pikmin into harm's way. Even if it does, it does throw them into the ground where they can't really take damage. This enemy is a D tier. The Skitterleaf. This enemy also can't kill Pikmin. It's fairly annoying, but it's never really clustered with any other enemy types, so it has to be a D tier as well. Now this brown version of the Skitterleaf is a different story. This is a very big jump in difficulty, as they're difficult to see, and they can catch you off guard very easily because of this. They also eat Pikmin pretty quickly, and you can't even tell the difference between a dead one and one that's alive that is just hiding. Additionally, the auto lock feature appears to deliberately try and help these guys out, as oftentimes you'll be throwing Pikmin to try and get the ones that are alive, and you'll lock onto the dead ones. Even though they have very low HP, their kill potential is very high, and I think placing them in A tier is actually fair. Next up, we have the Fiery Dweevil, the Ano Dweevil, the Hydro Dweevil, the Ice Blown Dweevil, and the Venom Dweevil. I'm marking all these Dweevils the same, as they pretty much are the same. Dealing with them just takes a little bit of time. I honestly think B tier is fair, mainly because they can create Nanduri issues and slow you down. The Arachnode. This spider shows up like three times in the entire campaign. If you throw a couple Pikmin at it, you can deal with it super easily. Combined with the fact that you don't really use Wing Pikmin and Wing Pikmin don't really have their unique paths that will go through these spider webs, they're never really a problem. I'll place them in D tier. Baldi Long Legs. Baldi is honestly probably a B tier. However, in the night time, it is easily the most difficult boss sitting at an S tier. For that reason alone, I honestly think placing it high up in the A tier is pretty fair in order to counteract both night and daytime. The Man at Legs. Everyone knows the Man at Legs, and everyone knows this is a difficult fight. I don't think it's a surprise to anyone that this is getting an S tier. It's got some crazy rapid fire, it's got a fair amount of HP, and it's honestly scary. Every time you see this boss, you just want to take cover and deal with it as quickly as possible. Ho ho ho! This guy grooving. Just out of respect, we gotta put the groovy long legs in S tier. But in all seriousness, this boss has the most amount of HP sitting at 11,000, believe it or not. This is way higher than any other boss in the game, by at least 2,000. On top of that, the second and third phase of music and how quickly it stomps is difficult to deal with. When Groovy Longlegs decides to shoot out its mist, if it ends up getting a lot of your Pikmin, it's essentially GG. Some of them in the middle might survive, but the most of them are about to get crushed. Honestly an exceptional boss fight, the music is great, the mechanics are awesome, and it has a fair amount of HP. So, putting it in the S tier is completely and utterly fair. The Anode Beetle. These enemies aren't too dangerous, they take a pretty long time to link up, and again, electricity isn't too bad. A C tier. The Iridescent Flint Beetle. This one is honestly going to go into its own tier, a brand new one that I'm about to make, Friend Not Foe. This is mainly because it can't kill Pikmin, and it's only helpful. The Doodlebug, on the other hand, is a little bit annoying. If you're following it with Ochi, and you happen to be directly behind it, and get caught in a poison cloud, a lot of your Pikmin are going to go crazy. You're going to want to whistle them back and deal with this enemy very quickly, otherwise you can actually lose some Pikmin to it. I think putting it in C tier just because of the problems it can cause is quite fair. The Iridescent Glint Beetle. Again, this enemy is completely beneficial, and it can't actually damage your Pikmin. Because of this, I'm going to put it in Friend Not Foe. I really like the design and coloring of the gold that they gave to it. The Spider Mites. 
These will scare away all your Pikmin. It's annoying, but it's mainly just a minor inconvenience, and if you actually do manage to kill these, you can get some spicy sprays and nectars from them. A D tier. The Scudder Chuck. The Scudder Chuck with Ice Crystals is super easy to deal with. When they have Bomb Rocks though, it's a little bit more dangerous. It's still not too bad, but you do actually have to keep your distance if they do throw the Bomb Rock. C tier. The Skeeter Skate. These annoying guys that glide across the water are difficult to deal with if they're a little bit far from the shore, but you can beat them easily if you have blue Pikmin or wing Pikmin. They also have very low kill potential as they just make your Pikmin go crazy and you can whistle them back easily. D tier. The Mucker Skate on the other hand is inherently more difficult because nothing can go in mud unless you freeze it or you use wing Pikmins to go over and attack it. For those reasons, it's going to go into C tier. Next up we have the white, yellow and red spectralids. I really love these butterflies. It's kind of silly that they show up as enemies on the map as these literally aren't enemies and they will never actually harm a Pikmin. I'm also going to place these in the friend not foe category. Continuing with butterflies, even though it's part of a different family, the Snowfake Fluttertail. This butterfly moth hummingbird thing is pretty cool. It's got a cool boss mechanic where you have to keep the room warm in order to throw a fire pine cone to defeat it. I guess it can kill Pikmin if it freezes them and then it uses its tongue to take them up, but this is very unlikely. You still have to keep your focus and it is an interesting boss fight. I'll put it into B tier. The Creeping Cassanthemum. These enemies have high HP and they can easily catch Pikmin. If it happens to catch you off guard and you're riding Ochi, you can end up getting knocked off and odds are you're going to lose some Pikmin. B tier. The Startle Spore. Like its brother, it has a chance of catching you off guard and making you lose some Pikmin. However, this one is more dangerous since it has the poison pools. After it sticks out its tongue, it will leave poison residue. Even if you end up attacking it from behind, often you will get Pikmin that get caught in this poison puddle. Therefore, it has to go a tier higher, and it goes into A tier. The myth, the legend, the breadbug. Everyone likes breadbugs. They're a little bit different in the sense that they bury items now opposed to bringing it into their lair. So honestly, it has zero kill potential because even when they bury an item and your Pikmin was carrying that item, the Pikmin will not get buried with the item, and in fact, they'll just start digging it out again. So it has to go in D tier, but because everybody likes these guys, Let's put them in the friend not foe category. The giant breadbug. This is the same as the previous one but stronger. They can pull a fair amount of weight and bury objects quicker. It has a charge attack but that charge attack doesn't even kill. I honestly don't think it even deflowers Pikmin. Again, we'll place it in the friend not foe category. Next up we have an enemy that I can't even pronounce its name properly. With the gold on their back it takes a little bit of time to defeat these little turtle angler fish snail things. Because of how fast this enemy actually attacks with its tongue attack, it actually does have a chance of getting some of your Pikmin. For that reason, I'll place it in B tier. Also as a side note, I really like their smile. Next up we have the big version, and this big version is a big step up. You have to pay attention when fighting this. Removing all the gold takes its time, and it's quick to re-pick up the pieces and put it back on its back. Additionally, if you happen to get caught by its tongue, you're going to lose a lot of Pikmin to it. Because of its high HP and the fact that you have to take off all of the gold on each of the red spots in order to defeat it, this enemy is deserving of the S tier. The Miniature Snoot Whacker. I've never actually had this thing smack Pikmin. The wiki says it can, but I only ever have it do the spin attack. It has to go in D tier for these reasons. The Mammoth Snoot Whacker, on the other hand, this is a big step up. The main way of dealing with this is to double rush with Ochi. This takes a lot of time as you have to wait for Ochi in order to rush twice. Additionally, it has a large AoE when it does its spin attack, and when he smack, he smack. A tier. The Sun Squish. Why did they add this egg yolk enemy to eggs? I mean, it makes sense, but it's a little bit annoying since you have to supervise Pikmin more when you're actually breaking eggs. It's annoying to deal with as it can get Pikmin pretty quickly, but it also dies pretty fast. C tier. The Fulix. Fulix is part of the Gulix family. The Fulix looks like the Gulix, but it isn't a Gulix. It's a Gulix species. You got that? Good. The Fulix can drown Pikmin. It's annoying to get them out of there. Purples or Ochi are great to deal with it in order to pull its tail out of the body and then deal damage. You have to pay attention when fighting this, but it's not too hard. B tier. The Downy Snagger, or as the community calls it, the Baby Snagger. This enemy gets a C tier. There is the small chance that it does get a Pikmin, However, it's very unlikely. The Burrowing Snagger, on the other hand, is a little bit more dangerous. 
It's completely burrowed in the ground and doesn't hop around even though it has legs. You'll only ever see that once you defeat the enemy. They have some HP to them. They're a little bit annoying to deal with and the fact that they pop up and go back in the ground every single time they start taking damage, I think placing them in B tier, especially when there's three of them, like in some caves, is quite fair. The Slepus Gurdicus is interesting. It eats a lot of things, from treasures to Pikmin. Never had a problem with it though, and you can deal with this thing fairly easily as it doesn't actually attack very frequently. D tier. Next up we have the three shell cakes. The Scorch Cake, the Shock Cake, and the Freeze Cake. These three are all pretty similar. When they're on their non-hazard side, it's super easy to rush them and take them out in a few quick seconds. They don't move around all that much, and when they actually do move around, it takes them a very long time, making them a pretty small threat. However, they do have a post-mortem crush. I think they can still be annoying for some players for this reason exactly, so you have to be a little bit careful around them. C2. The Puff Stool. This enemy no longer creates Puffmen. Instead of making Puffmen, it makes your Pikmin dance, and it has no killing potential for this reason. Has to go in D2. The Tox Tool, on the other hand, is significantly more dangerous. It can create poison, revive dead enemies, and revive poison mushrooms that you've destroyed. It doesn't make Pikmin dance, meaning that you don't have to worry about your Pikmin falling under its control. However, it's still a lot harder to deal with. I'm guessing most players had to meticulously clear out the room before dealing with it, and then they brought in their cavalry to defeat it. Because of this, I'm actually going to place it in the A tier because of the mechanics it has, and it's actually quite an interesting fight. The Moldy Dwarf Bulborg. Annoying with its poison, it still doesn't have a high killing potential. Also surprisingly, it's being controlled by a parasitic tox stool. It's kind of like Bulbman. However, again, not too difficult to defeat. C tier. Next up, we have the Moldy Slooch and the Pyroclasmatic Slooch. Both of these slooches are pretty much the exact same. They're kind of dangerous if there's more than one of them, but dealing with one of them is incredibly easy. Additionally, Ochi can rush through a bunch of them at the same time, and they're normally quite close to each other. I still have to place these in D tier, as they have a little bit of threat to them. The Bearded Amp Rat. Now this thing looks really scary when it has its mouth open, but it takes a fair amount of time to actually do its attack, and your Pikmin can deal with it very easily. Even if your Pikmin are just auto-attacking it, because of how long it takes in order to start its shock attack, they'll probably kill it before that even happens. C tier. The Mamuda. This guy is super peaceful. Unlike in the second game, he won't just smack you as you approach. He loves me, and I love him. Seeing him sitting in the Blossoming Arcadia was amazing. And if your Blossoming Arcadia is at 99% complete and not 100% complete, you're a real one. Friend, not foe. The Porquillon. This porcupine enemy is the first enemy that you fight in the game. With 100 Pikmin, you can take it down with a single rush. When fighting at other times in the game, it's a little bit more difficult as you have less Pikmin. It's still defeated pretty easily, but you still have to pay attention to the attacks. B tier. The Honey Wisp. The Honey Wisp cannot attack. It's literally only helpful as it gives nectar, which is able to flower Pikmin. We'll place this in the friend not foe category as well. Back onto the Blowhog family, we have the Puffy Blowhog. I honestly don't think this thing has killing potential. This is mainly because it's not really placed on any maps where it can blow Pikmin off of the map. Defeating it with pretty much any Pikmin type is fairly easy, and therefore we have to place it in D tier. Now the Icy Blowhog is inherently more difficult because it freezes Pikmin. Again though, ice really isn't that deadly, and it's probably the least deadly of all the hazards, since your Pikmin again stay in one location. This enemy also goes in the D tier. The Withering Blowhog is probably the weakest of the three HP wise. However, it does actually shoot itself into the stratosphere, running away. This mechanic makes it actually take the longest to defeat out of the three, and for that reason, it'll still go in D tier, but just above the Puffy Blowhog. The Lesser Spotted Jelly Float. Jelly Floats will go after you. However, they take a very long time to digest Pikmin if they do manage to pick some up. And even if you have two or three Pikmin, you'll actually be able to defeat this enemy before it's ever able to get a Pikmin kill. D tier. The Greater Spotted Jelly Float. This one has significantly more HP. It falls in the same boat as the Lesser Jelly Float in the sense that it has more HP, but that's about it. Still very easy to deal with. D tier. The Woolpole. Woolpole? Wogpole. Wogpoles are the arch enemies of Blue Pikmin. I don't know why the blue Pikmin hate them, but they're constantly attacking them in pretty much every game at their beginning intro. Wogpoles can't deal any damage at all, so they gotta go into D tier. The Yellow Wallyhop. 
also known as the yellow wallywog. This yellow frog, I like them, but they're not really deadly and they can do some damage if you do happen to get your Pikmin crushed by them. For that reason, we'll place them in C tier. The Wally Hop. Same boat as the yellow frog, this one it really isn't that deadly, and it's not as deadly as it was in previous games. I guess that's the case for pretty much everything in Pikmin 4. Regardless, this enemy also goes into the C tier. The Chili Hop. The Chili Hop is actually a little bit more dangerous. If he happens to get them right away then, no. However, if you let him hippity hoppity, he'll actually create some ice puddles, which is fairly dangerous given that it'll freeze your Pikmin and then combined with its crush mechanic, still not super dangerous, we'll put it in a tier higher, it's gonna be in low B. The Master Hop. Master Hop is truly a master of hopping. He'll create puddles where he hops depending on the map. Unfortunately though, it gets frozen in like 2 seconds flat like a common enemy, and it doesn't have much HP. For that, we'll place it in the B tier as well, just like the Chili Hop. The Water Dumple. This enemy was annoying in previous games, and it's still kind of annoying. I don't really like these grub dogs, however, I'm gonna put them in B tier. The Puckering Blino. By itself, this enemy isn't that dangerous. However, when it's in groups, it can be a bit problematic, like in the area Serene Shore. For the most part, you can rush them with blue Pikmin and deal with them pretty simply. However, there is the chance that one of your blue Pikmin does get caught and you don't get to kill them in time. Placing them in C tier is quite fair. The Prickle Puff. This unicorn puffer fish doesn't have a lot of HP, sitting at 300 to be exact. But they kill Pikmin very quickly. The most effective method of dealing with them is to rush them with multiple Pikmin rather than throwing Pikmin. Because if you end up throwing Pikmin at them, it'll knock them off in front and impale them very quickly, causing quick Pikmin deaths. B tier. The Waddlepuss. I don't think this enemy can kill Pikmin. He honestly just wants to blow bubbles and get Pikmin caught in its bubbles. It's also got an amazing animation if you do let it blow bubbles all around its body. This enemy is honestly a D tier since it can't kill Pikmin. However, since it blows bubbles and it's honestly quite cute, I'll put them in the friend not foe category near the bottom. The Aristo Crab Offspring. This crab unfortunately can't do the crab raid. For that reason alone, D tier. Really though, they have low HP and low kill potential, so D tier is fair. The Peckish Aristocrab, on the other hand, is a big step up, both in size and HP, and attack potential. This one appears to more actively try and grab Pikmin, and when it does grab Pikmin, it can eat a few of them at a time. Because of the fact that it's more aggressive, this one will actually jump all the way up to low B tier. The Grub Chucker. This tall crab is intimidating. However, if you approach it from behind and throw Pikmin, it likely will never even notice you. Additionally, if it does happen to grab Pikmin, it takes forever to actually do anything. So you'll be able to knock it down before it actually manages to kill Pikmin. Still though, I can see some people having struggles with it, and its high HP is nothing to laugh at. We'll give him B tier. The Hermit Cromad. The Hermit Cromad can catch you off guard, and that's about it. I would argue for this reason it's a little bit more deadly than the second game, since it doesn't appear to pop up just because you walk near its spawn point. I'll give it C tier, not really that deadly. The Bug-Eyed Cromad. Now this one has some HP to it. It has a unique mechanic of having to hit its eyes in order to deal damage to its underbelly. This thing isn't likely to get any of your Pikmin. If it even does manage to grab some of them, you're likely to be able to hit one of its eyes, stunning it and freeing your Pikmin before they actually die. I'll still give it a B tier as I can see some players struggling with this enemy. The Crusted Rumpup. Now this enemy takes a little bit of time to learn. Once you do learn though, it's pretty simple. Bring the tail down, attack the tail, run away, beat the process. I'll give it A tier, as it does have a bit of killing potential, and it's significantly more difficult than a lot of the other enemies on this list. The Pearly Clamp Clamp. This takes some time to defeat. On land, you can easily defeat it with purples or wing Pikmin. However, in water, basically a game of patience where if you rush in, you're probably going to lose some Pikmin. It'll get into B tier just for those reasons alone. The Toity Bloister. The Bloister here isn't that dangerous in water. To be honest, I don't know if its ink attacks actually works in water. However, on land, it can get you to lose some Pikmin to it. Unlikely though, so we'll put it in C tier. The Bloom Cap Bloister. This one is a little bit more deadly than the previous one. It obviously has more health, but it also has more range with its attacks. It picks up and eats treasures, and that can be a little bit annoying as it can slow you down. Overall, it's not super difficult, but it did cause me a little bit of issues. Low A tier. The Bog Swallow. Mud Slug here is annoying. If you're able to freeze them, great. However, if you don't have enough Ice Pikmin to freeze the mud, then dealing with them becomes quite annoying. Apart from Wing Pikmin, you don't really have a good choice of dealing with this, as again, nothing can go through mud. If he spawns a bit too far away from the shore, you can't even attack him with Wing Pikmin. 
combined with them having a decent amount of HP and pretty decent kill potential, this enemy actually gets to go into the low A tier, the Water Wraith. Now this one is kind of weird. Since I've played Pikmin 2, I am accustomed to dealing with the Water Wraith. However, first time players can definitely have a big problem with this, since it's literally Submerged Castle 2.0. Despite having the exact same amount of HP in the second game, fighting the Water Wraith in this game is significantly easier. This is mainly because he gets stunned a lot quicker, and you can stun lock it a lot easier than you could in the second game. Still though, everybody has a sense of fear or dread when seeing this thing, and it would be wrong not to place it in the S tier. The Smoky Frog. This Smoky Frog is interesting. It is no longer the powerhouse that it was from the first game. It spawns from Yoshi's Egg, however if you break this egg, it's easily defeated as you won't even have to fight it. Otherwise though, if it does spawn, it has a fair amount of HP. Using Gloom, it can kill Glow Pikmin, and it has a roar that can be annoying to deal with. If you fight this in Cavern for a King, it shoots projectiles, and that is a significant threat. This enemy is deserving of the S tier. The Ancient Sire Hound. This is the part where Ochi goes, Finally, a worthy opponent. It is definitely the most difficult enemy in the game to defeat, and has probably led a lot of players to use the Rewind Time feature, or simply led a lot of players to have a lot of Pikmin deaths. Its first phase is fairly easy. It drops rocks from the ceiling and rushes the player. The ice phase is slightly more difficult as you have to dodge the snowballs that it creates and you have to keep out of the frost breath. The electricity phase on the other hand was really annoying, at least for me. He throws a bunch of these electricity balls and they spin around. They're pretty quick to deal with but they can be annoying and the fact that he often does his roar near these electricity balls means you have to deal with them. The fire phase is easier than the electricity phase. This phase is harder if you don't take out the fire orbs quick enough, but the fire orbs are much easier to take down as they don't have spinning electricity around them. Once you do take this down, you go into the final phase, which is the hardest phase. With its gloom puddles and his gloom breath, you literally need Ochi to deal with this. Some combinations of how the gloom puddles fall and where this ancient sirehound ends up flying over means it's literally impossible to reach him sometimes. This combined with a disorienting screech where if you happen to be approaching it and get caught in it, pretty much most of your Pikmin are going to die. Honestly the most difficult fight in the game, and it's deserving of the S tier. It's an amazing boss fight, I wasn't expecting this to be so complex. The soundtrack is also really cool, it was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Last but not least, we have Moss. Now Moss technically falls in the friend not foe category, but they also are a foe or at least an obstacle in some areas. In Heroes Hideaway, they have no killing potential, but it can be fairly annoying and you do have to deal with them. In Danduri battles though, this is where Moss really gets to shine. They can actually be the reason you lose a Danduri battle, especially against Louie, where Louie will command Moss to use the Swallow feature and carry some pretty large treasures back to the base. Because of this threat to your Danduri, I think placing them in B tier is pretty fair. This is the Pikmin 4 enemy tier list. I'll catch you next time.